welcome to the special discussion with sri sv acharya garu president emeritus and founder of shankar netralaya om trust inc in usa and his wife shrimati nirmala acharya garu this organization is also the only body authorized to collect contributions on behalf of shankar netralaya in the united states every year thousands of patients are suffering from vision related issues due to poverty lack of good eye care facilities and lack of timely medical help in rural villages from the past four decades shankar netralaya is standing by those patients and helping them by providing free eye care clinics surgeries accommodations and required necessities in 1988 sri s v acharya garu founded shankar netralaya om trust inc in usa the mission of this organization is to spread the philosophy conduct charitable events raise funds and provide donations to the shankar netralaya in india from the past two years shankar netralaya has been ranked one of the best ophthalmic centers in india and the name temple of the eye became synonymous to shankar netralaya shankar netralaya om trust is the only indian organization that acquired highest ranking of four stars from charity navigator sri sv acharya garu and shrimati nirmala acharya garu are the true inspirations and motivated many like minded people to join this great cause and a journey to do god's own work in 2020 the trust transferred funds to support almost 21000 free surgeries out of which 7108 are minor surgeries 1589 are major surgeries in addition to this every year they support hundreds of rural school screen camps and eye camps for the impoverished patients in the remote parts of the india with this i would like to invite shankar netralaya president emeritus sri sv acharya garu and shrimati nirmala acharya garu who has dedicated their lives for the sake of humanity welcome to the show sri and shrimati sv acharya garu Thank you very much uh, prashanta ji ragini ji nana tv and bala indurthi our president for giving us an opportunity to present our uh, shankar netralaya in mana tv pleasure is mine sir and ma'am both of you are true inspirations for today's generation and i feel extremely fortunate for having this conversation with you today so sri s v acharya garu you started shankar netralaya usa in 1988 and served in many capacities at present you are serving as president emeritus so before we get to know your involvement in the trust me and our viewers would like to know more about your childhood and some personal questions so there is no doubt that the childhood plays an important role in shaping us and what we are today so how was your early childhood and education i was born in a small village near udupi district in karnataka state uh udupi is known for two things one is uh, uh lord krishna's temple second is udupi restaurants probably you see all over india and here my father was a very orthodox person my mother was a very pious lady i went to school in the local village up to my 8th grade then one thing obvious was that uh, there was a lot of poverty in the family there were 11 children and my father was a little bit of land he had but not a whole lot of wealth so i had to find some means to get my education so i was sent to about 10 miles away to a place something known as a matha or a monastery I stayed there for three years. Dad went to high school, and um, uh, at that time, evenings I had to study the Vedantic scriptures. Daytime, go to high school, finish the high school with good credentials. Then my father had a different plan for me. He wanted me to go for Vidya Pitha. This is the Vedantic studying center in Bangalore. He wanted me to become a Vedantic scholar. but uh, i knew at that time about 60 years ago now the future for the vedantic scholars was so brim so i thought this is not something i'm going to do my father was very disappointed however he agreed with me compromised with me and <clears throat> let me go to college i went to college and completed bcom and 64 at that time there's a turning point i want to take up a job and support the family but my two brothers they thought i can do a much better future if i got higher education they financed me and helped me to go for a uh, chartered accountant course i finished that in 3 years so in 1967 i 
I became a chartered accountant. And of course, CS generally can fairly decent living. This is briefly my early childhood and my education. That's so inspiring, Acharya Garu. Because at such an young age, you have your own decisions and you stood by your decisions. That's so inspiring. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your experience. What about you, ma'am? How was your childhood life? Childhood was very different from my husband. Uh, I come from a middle class family. My father ran uh, restaurants in uh, Chennai. I was born and raised in Chennai. Um, my father had nine children, eight girls and one son. Uh, we were raised very sheltered life. You know, girls have to uh, get married by 18 and things like that. So my childhood was very structured. Uh, we went to a convent education and that's it. Uh, once we reached 16 or 18, we just got married. Uh, that was how my, but uh, throughout my life, I've seen my parents, uh, how they lived their life and uh, um what they did, our house was filled with relatives growing up. My aunts, my cousins who were not well to do, they were given a place to stay, food, shelter, education. So somehow I think it all just uh, was part and parcel of our growing up. So we never thought twice that uh, giving something that we have or sharing was anything big deal or anything so we just did it what came naturally so I owe a lot to my parents I think for what life they lived and showed us so I would credit my parents for most of the sharing that we do now. That's so awesome ma'am uh, it's very nice to know how your childhood has shaped you and now you are with Shankar Netralia and helping so many people that's so inspiring thank you so much. Sri so, Sri Acharya Garu, after education, how was your professional life journey? My first job was as assistant administrative officer at the Life Insurance Corporation of India in Bombay. Um, the job was good, the pay was, everything was okay, but I did not find enough of challenge that a young professional seeks. So I thought I got to make a change. So instead, after two years, I changed to a more challenging position at Associated Cement Companies that was in Shahabad, Karnataka State. There, I was there for about two or three years. That time, that income was good, but still that was not sufficient enough to take care of my family. I had to support my parents, sisters and all of that. So I thought I got to do something and I applied for immigration. That time, U.S. used to permit qualified accountants to come here. So, I applied for immigration while I was in Bombay. Got approved after, right after my marriage, I migrated to Chicago. My brother-in-law used to live there. Then my first job was with the City Colleges of Chicago as assistant controller. Yeah, it's a community college system for Metro Chicago. I was there for about four years. That time I also got certified as certified public accountant. Right after that, I went to my boss and said, look, I'm, I'm a CPA and a CA. So you get me some promotion. And he said, look, next promotion is my job. I don't plan to quit this job. So there's no other chance in this place. I started looking around. Then I got a very promising opportunity in Fairbanks, Alaska. I went there as accounting manager for an oil refinery, stayed for about three years. But the downside was that, uh, that the weather was extreme weather. In December, you see 21 hours of darkness. In June 21, you see 21 hours of daylight time. And again, it is very, very harsh, too far away from the main continent. Then I thought I got to make change. So I changed. I had a brief uh, job in uh, San Francisco, then Houston. Then I came to Metro Washington, D.C. My first position was the state of Maryland as fiscal administrator for about a uh, few years. Then I joined uh, a Peace Corps as accounting director, stayed there for five years. And after that, I joined a federal agency as director of account, budget operations for about 11 years I was there, and I retired in uh, 2016. So it was a very challenging and very satisfying professional life I had. Thank you so much, uh, S.C. Acharya It was so inspiring to see the ambitions, how ha ambitious you were and uh, the struggles you went through for the betterment of life. That's so inspiring. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, uh, how and when did you meet uh, 
Acharya Garu and how was it like moving to this country with you? Uh, when uh, my parents were busy getting us off married because every daughter after two years, the next one was married off. So uh, when uh, my turn came, uh, my, I think my dad fell over, head over heels about him because he's a chartered accountant and he's young, he's taking care of his own family. So all parents think is somebody who takes care of their siblings have to be, take care of their wife too, right? So my father's uh, logic was, this is really a good person you should. So a lot of that time, I don't think we think much. It's basically our parents convince us about what is best for us. We trust them. Uh, so he came into my life and then uh, uh, within 10 months, he came abroad, uh, which was a blessing because now I could pursue what I wanted to do because back home, those times, once you get married, a uh, housewife and taking care of children is all what you look forward to. Here, I could go back to school and I took uh, computer courses and computer science and accounting. So while I was having my son and he was growing up, I was attending school. So basically, uh, life took another turn and uh, started getting interested in working outside the house, taking care of the family. So coming to USA changed my life completely. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your life journey. So besides the Shankar Netralaya, are you both involved with any other non-profits and uh, charity organizations? When I migrated to USA, I was in Chicago. I served as treasurer for Kannada Association called Vidyaranya in Chicago uh, for about a year. Then I moved to Fairbanks, Alaska. Again, when I came back to Washington area, I became treasurer of a local Karnataka, Kannada association called Kaveri. Served for a few years. I was also auditor for them for a while. Then uh, I served as uh, editorial advisor for a CPA journal called Journal of Accountancy for about six years. Publish a publication every month. They get a lot of articles by various writers. We review them and uh, approve them for publication. We also, me, Nirmala, and uh, our friends arranged a three-day conference here for people coming from uh, my hometown area, South Kerala and Udupi district. Three-day event in uh, 2004. Trustee of local temple here, Sri Shivashtu Temple for about three years. Then, of course, I joined uh, Shankar Netrali. I started this organization in 1988. Awesome, awesome. So it is very nice to know that besides Shankar Netrale, you are involved with so many community activities and organizations, it's very nice. So coming to Shankar Netrale, we would like to know more about its vision, mission, and the services provided to the public. Shankar Netrale was started by Dr. S.S. Badrinath. He had his MD in uh, ophthalmology, with the specialization in retina, and most, most complicated areas. And right after he finished his MD, went back to India to serve Mother India. And he attended one of the lectures by Kanchi Kamakoti Shankaracharya, that he impressed upon the philosophy of serving with the missionary spirit. What do you do with some kind of service to the needy people, poor people? That impressed him quite a bit. Then he started the Shankaracharya in a small scale. At that time, maybe eight or 10 beds or something like that. Now it became a big, huge operation with the so many locations and so many beds, so many hospitals and all that. Their whole objective is to provide free service to the poor and affordable price for others. This is one of the main thing, their thing. Poor means whose income is less than 12,000 rupees per month. They are given free service. They are brought from their village, put them up, feed them, treat them, send them back to their village. Just what they do. One thing is that. Second is, they also provide ophthalmic education, graduate, undergraduate, postgraduate, and fellowship. All this they have provided. And nursing uh, uh, school they have. And one in 12 ophthalmic professionals serving the India are trained from by Shankar Netralia. And lastly, they also do uh, ophthalmic research, India centric research, so that they will prevent blindness, rather. Uh, 
development of autonomy disease in the country. That's what they're trying to do. In addition, they do school screenings. So when children are tested at a very young age, all the problems can be identified and they can be treated. That's one thing. Also, what they call teleophthalmology. They go and uh, uh, have a, uh, a camp in a village or so. They test all the patients. The ones who need treatment, they are brought to the main campus. They have eye bank. Anybody who dies, they can donate their eyes and it's treated, it's given to for patients who need them. Another major thing is the mobile eye surgical unit. This is a operation theater on wheels. There are two buses. One serves as the operation theater, other one as the uh, preparatory unit. And they prospect all the patients. Then th these two buses go out to the village. They camp there for about 12 days. They treat the patients after post-operative care, they come back to the main campus. There are two such units, one in Jharkhand in uh, uh, North India, and another one in uh, Chennai. They uh, go about uh, 17 to 20 camps every year. Each time they treat about 180 to 200 patients. That's what they do, is the one. This is the first of its kind in India, uh, rather in Asia, because they have to perform the most hygienic conditions. It's not easy to have the same kind of operation theater in the village in that location. And um, every day they treat about 2,500 outpatients perform 250 surgeries. Last year they treated 800,000 patients, outpatients, and 60,000 surgeries they perform every year. Netral is not the largest ophthalmic institution but it's the most uh, qualitative care center. That's why they are given, considered as one of the best 100 hospitals in the world. Also, they are given so many awards, uh, and I can go and go on and on. Dr. Our founder is given the title of Living Legend and Padma Bhushan by the President of India. This is briefly about Shankar Netralia. That's so awesome, sir. Uh, any medical equipment there? They come with a lot of cost, and you and SV Acharya Garu and Nirmala Acharya Garu, you are supporting Shankar Netralia from USA by providing so many, by conducting so many charitable events and raising the funds. This is so commendable. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing. So, in what way you think Shankar Netralia is different from other organizations? Organization was started by Dr. S.S. Badrinath. He's a very disciplined person. He wanted a very, say, set up a very high standard for anything that's done there. And employees know that. That's why every employee knows that they have to serve the missionary spirit. They put long hours. They are very conscious of the quality of the service they're providing. And also, we got a lot of uh, endorsement by people in India, like Nani Paltiwala, doing almost all his estate here, Ratan Tata is another person. Likewise, so many people have supported the thing. Dr. Badri is a visionary. He wanted to do lots of things for them. And of course, he, he was able to accomplish that. And um, these employees are committed and dedicated. That's one of the biggest assets for the organization. And also, they send a lot of their uh, doctors for training in the US and then send them back over there. So the difference is the qualitative quality of the service they provide and the commitment of the employees that they have. This is the difference between other organizations. Awesome, sir. So, uh, ma'am, Acharya Garu covered a lot of things about Shankar Netralaya. So, do you want to add any inputs? Uh, Shankar Netralaya, just the name, um, commands so much respect, and uh, people all over the world, you know, come there for the services that is so unique. Um, I had once gone, and you know, everybody wants to get the surgery done because they don't want to wear eyeglasses. So over here, if you want to get that done, they will do it right away. No questions asked because that's money for them. But what surprised me was uh, Shankar Nitalaya, when I went there and I said, I want to get my eye operated so I won't wear glasses anymore. They said, no, we cannot do it. You have a problem with astigmatism that we won't be able to fix it. So, you know, when a lot of uh, hospitals are there just to make money, very rare you find an honest hospital that will say, I 
do not want to do that because I had my sons, two sons, me, everybody ready to get it. And they said that we all had the same stigmatism that we should not get it done. So that impressed me a lot because I live in a society where a lot of unnecessary surgeries are performed just for money making business, you know. And uh, the humility, you know, the, of the doctors, they're all well trained in their field, but they're so down to earth. There's no ego, there's no, uh, they're all service minded, you know. And that really impressed me a lot uh, about the institution. And uh, I'm yet to find a hospital in India that is so well run. Like when you go there and visit the hospital, uh, for a split second, you forget you are in India. It is that well maintained. So that's another thing that impressed me a lot. Awesome, ma'am. That's really nice to know that nowadays everyone are behind uh, money making, but uh, the Shankar Nyatralaya doctors are, uh, for them, the patients come first. Their well, patient's welfare is the most important thing for them. Thank you so much, ma'am. So Shankar Nyatralaya is a brainchild of the living legend, Dr. S.S. Badrinathgaru. And I assume that you might have got an opportunity to meet him personally. So how was your experience with him and how is he in real life? Dr. Badrinath is one of the most disciplined person and also a highly focused person. He's only committed to service of the people. He comes here. I came a number of times to our home here. He stayed here. He went across the country too. But uh, his objective is only to meet the professionals visit doctors, donors, this is what's mostly interested. He's not interested in the sightseeing or these things. Okay, this is the thing that makes a huge difference from him. And he's visionary. And uh, it's, it's a, his discipline that has translated to all the other employees in the organization. The whole organization has that discipline now. That's why the service is good and the quality is good. I've been able to do a lot more things for the society. Very nice, sir. Uh, Nirmala, ma'am, what was your experience with Badrinath? I met him as um, a guest in my house. He used to visit us quite often. I was very terrified because uh, what do I cook for someone who's used to a lot of uh, restaurant foods and uh, so much. So I just did my South Indian uh, Carnatic cooking and all that. Very terrified. But he loves food. He's a foodie and he enjoyed And for me, it's like, oh my God, he loved my food. And it's just that the feeling of homeliness is like a brother visiting you. You know, he makes you feel that comfortable. And uh, more and more, I keep saying, uh, the more you achieve, the more down to earth people are. That That is what I want to say about Dr. Badri. Uh, I would go out, do some shopping and come back and I find him. Uh, playing Jenga with my son and uh, joking around. You know, the, that side of personality, it's very hard to see uh, when you don't meet the person, you know, but when, you, when they're living in your house for a week or 10 days, you see them relax and you see the different personality. And we were very blessed to see him. And uh, everything about him is just simplicity. He, that, that's, that's why I think everybody thinks he's such a great personality because uh, we went to Tirupati with him and my sister was very surprised. We're getting down and he's standing there taking her luggage and we're like, no, that's okay, that's okay. He said, no, give me a luggage because you're coming down. So, you know, uh, it, it's just too much for, for us to accept somebody who's a legend to just be down to earth and uh, always he sees good things to say about the other person. That's one great quality I learned from him. It's never about himself. He always, if I say something, he will always turn around and make me feel better with his words, you know, so it's an amazing personality. Wow, such a beautiful memories with him. I think he might be feeling nostalgic uh, by memorizing all those things. Lovely, ma'am. Thank you so much. So all of this seems to be a lot of work and a lot of efforts, efforts that you need to put in, like constantly you need to put in a lot of efforts. So what inspired or prompted you to start Shankar Netrala USA and what still drives you to this day? It's kind of a rare coincidence, I would say. 
because I'd never planned to start anything here. What happened was my father had an eye infection. He was in the small village I come from in Udupi. And uh, then the question, what do I do? But somehow they could not take care of that in Udupi itself. And I told him to come to Chennai where my in-laws stay. He came there. Then the question was, what do I do? Where do I take him? Want an appointment quickly. My stay is short. Then um, somebody recommended go to Shankar Netra. It's a non-profit, very highly reputed organization. Then I somehow managed to get an appointment with Dr. Badri. We took him there. He took care of the infection issue. Then uh, knowing that I'm a CPA from US and uh, he said, look, I have a lot of friends in US. Can you help us in starting some organization there? Then I said, okay. In fact, he had in mind that I serve as a, some support person. His folks will take care of that. But uh, I came back, I contacted the people and all that. Nothing much happened for six months. In six months, they visited us. Dr. Badrinath and Vasanti visited us. Then they, they told me, can you take upon yourself and do it? Then I said, okay, it's my way divine, divine message I'm getting here. Let us uh, do it. We started that. In 87, they came. In 88 June, we started this nonprofit organization for IRS exemption. And it came to being. And very glad to see that today we collect more than a million dollars every year with the support from the public. So it's not, not my effort. I mean, we started something. Our first president was C.V. Narasimhan former undersecretary of United Nations, which is 33 years now. And I'm very, very happy to be associated with this organization and the support I get from all the trustees, the volunteers and the donors and TV channels, Sigmana TV and other TV channels who are publishing our uh, events and all that. I, we really appreciate that. Thank you so much, sir. It's very nice to know how you are uh, supporting Shankar Netralia in India by raising uh, so many funds that's really inspiring. So, Nirmala ma'am, so what prompted or inspired you uh, to support Acharya Garu when he decided to start Shankarnetralaya in the USA? strongly believe nothing is really planned. Sometimes things happen and uh, take you and we were blessed that uh, it landed in our lap to do what we are doing. Uh, he always feels very uh, sad sometimes that when he took his father, he had to make the decision uh, to inject that one eye that was not working. So to basically get that one eye blind. Always he said, I, it's a very difficult uh, decision for a son to make. But they said that it would infect everywhere and he would have problem. He was already 85 years old. But... I tell him everything has a reason. Now he is responsible with the trustees and the people helping. Thousands and thousands of people are getting eyesight. Uh, so I always tell that your dad's eyesight had to go, but there's so many people who received on the other end. So God works in miraculous ways, they say. So uh, we never went seeking for Netralaya. Netralaya came to landed on our lap. So we are very blessed to have a cause that is, so, is such a good cause to give eyesight to so many. Um, and what I understand is the blindness is curable in India because 50 to 60% is cataract, you know, and people don't get it corrected. So uh, you're giving a livelihood to people. Uh, like I saw one of the advertisement they had, the woman was saying, uh, when she is blind, she cannot even go and sell fruits in the market. Now she, it's a livelihood back given to her. It's not just eyesight, you know. So these stories make you feel uh, you're, it's only a blessing that somebody gave you this chance to be part of. So I re, I'm very enthusiastic about the whole uh, opportunity. That's so lovely, ma'am. I just got goosebumps by knowing your experience in life, Acharya Garu and your experience in life how other people, so many people are getting uh, uh, benefited because of one experience in your life. That's, that's really, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's something uh, uh, which gives purpose for our life, some meaning to our life. That's really nice, ma'am, for sharing your experience with us. 
So, um, Ashare Garu, what are the objectives of Shankar Netralaya USA? Objective of Shankar Netralaya is very simple. We want to raise as much money as possible, spend as little as possible, and send as much money as possible to Shankar Netralaya to treat poor people. That's all the objective. For this purpose, we have 35 trustees now. Our uh, president, Bala Ingurthi, increased the number from 25 to 35 trustees now. We have 14 chapters throughout the country. We're all working very hard, to get the funding funds from different people. So we are able to collect more money and, and uh, uh, spend our administrative expenses almost 1% because everybody, nobody's paid for this. Everybody's volunteer here. We are, that's a simple objective. Raise as much money and send, send as much as possible to India. And uh, we don't provide medical service here. We do send, uh, refer some cases for uh, training in, uh, in uh, India. Some of the people come from internship. We refer them there. They provide those opportunities. Basically, that's all the objective here. Very simple. Send as much money as possible. That's what we have been doing for the last 33 years. That's so nice, sir. So mm -hmm. in USA, we see there are a lot of uh, charitable non-profit organizations. So with competing organizations seeking the same donation donors, how do you raise funds? And uh, what are the various donation plans you have? We do advertise in different medias, newspaper, the uh, website is there. And also we have trustees, they have their own friends and relatives. And uh, we have endorsement by big uh, names, big uh, band ambassadors like Abdul Kalam, Ratan Tata, Nani Palkiwala, Mr. Ganguly, Rajni Kant. These are people I've been talking about this organization. So we get a lot of endorsements. And also uh, number of Indians migrated in, 19, in the 80s. They know about the organization and lots of they, they have been our supporters. And we do hold our mid-year campaign, the year-end campaign like that. Every year, end of the year, normally everybody who, the first donation may come a little bit late, but once they're convinced that our cause is genuine, we are spending very little money and help most of the money go back to India for the poor service, they become lifetime donors. So when it's an errand campaign, we get huge response because everybody has designated, I want to send $100 or $500 or whatever. End of the year, they just send a check to us. This is how they do. And uh, also we organize a number of events here. Uh, of course, because of the pandemic, we could not do as much as before, but uh, we do eight to 10 or 15 concerts throughout the country by the local chapters raise money for that. And our tariff is like this. For $65, we provide cataract service on a poor patient. For $250, for major surgery, we perform on a poor patient. $2,600, they perform 40 cataract surgeries in a single day. For $2,200, they perform perpetual uh, major surgery for 12 years. So likewise, there are so many donation plans. So this is how they have been doing and we are getting very, very good response from the donors in the country. Thank you so much, sir. Nirmala, mm -hmm. ma'am, uh, do you also provide any inputs or any thoughts or suggestions while planning these various donation plans? James, uh, he gets tired of my suggestions because I'm uh, constantly giving him suggestions, but he's the only person he has to take care of it. But uh, most often, you know, they have a good group of trustees uh, they have meetings constantly over the phone, over the Zoom. So they come up with a lot of uh, programs to raise funds. Um, uh, recently, one of our trustee, his father passed away. He couldn't go to India, but he raised uh, only 200 days of music programs he organized in honor of his father. And, uh, you know, different ways our names are getting out there. So basically, you know, they got, they have a good group of trustees who come up with a lot of programs and who are very um, enthusiastic about this organization. So other than me just giving him a little bit of this and that, you know, uh, there's not much I do from this end as far as fundraising. Thank you so much, ma'am. So under your leadership, Sri Acharya Garu, 
we would like to know the overview of uh, shankar netralay usa activities especially the trust activities during this pandemic situation we started this uh, organization 1988 as a small entity today it's a fairly big organization with 14 chapters across the country that we have trustees we also have one of the very very active president bala indurthi since 2019 So he's be able to get more uh, trustees, get more resources for the organization, and uh, uh, every year we hold ten uh, to fifteen events uh, in various locations. Also, we also raise funds through what's known as a combined federal campaign. This is a federal program under which federal employees can donate money through their payroll deduction. We collect that. also united way we collect employees payroll matching programs and uh, in 2016 we had yeah rahman concert in the united nations celebrating 50th year of bharat ratna ms subalakshmi event in 1956 56 that was one event of 50 years 2016 in paying tribute to bharat ratna ms subalakshmi We had a year Rahman concert organized by Shankar Netral at United Nations. That was a great success, and uh, we collect uh, funds every year for uh, for uh, that will be sufficient for about twenty thousand cataract surgeries. And uh, due to the pandemic, it has been a little bit tough in last year and uh, this year so far. Last year we had uh, several events. Few of them are like by Rahul Vellal. We had a concert. Virtual concert. Same thing with uh, uh, Kanya Kumari had a concert. Concert. Shobha Raju concert was there virtual. And this year we had uh, what's known as the Shadhana Swarajana, uh, meaning hundred days of uh, concert by our trustee in um, Los Angeles again virtual. Then we had uh, Kuchipudi dance by Nilima Gattamanagu from Atlanta for hundred days. They had their dance Kuchipudi dance programs. And each event, people donate money for us. The ones who are watching the program, they give. Also, we had another one when uh, just uh, Nirmala mentioned now about uh, one of our trustees. Father passed away. He started a concert series for eleven days, but some it was so popular it went on for months and months and for one year it continued. With all this, we have been able to connect to people and also raise significant amount of money and give an opportunity for the people to. Have virtually show their uh, talents, so this has been one of the important elements for this organization. That's so nice uh, to know that you are indirectly also encouraging our Indian culture, like uh, promoting the Carnatic music and promoting the classical dances. Not only raising the funds, but you are also encouraging our culture. That is really nice to know. Thank you so much, sir. So we also came to know that the Shankar Netralaya Om Trust is the only Indian organization that acquired highest ranking of four stars from Charity Navigator for financial accountability and fiscal transparency. Could you please explain a little bit about this? Uh, Charity Navigator is one of the very well known uh, charity organization ranking organization in USA, and there are a number of strict criteria. To be given four star, that's the highest ranking one can get. Uh, your uh, expense ratio should be less. You should have certain policies in place, and uh, overhead expense should be under certain limit. That number of factors, look, audit should be pretty clean. And that number of things are should to happen. That's the only after that they give you that four stars. And uh, we have been trying to very very we are. Pretty clean operation, very transparent operation. You want to minimize the expenses and uh, collect as much money and send as much as possible back home. So, based upon this, they have given us four stars, and we are very happy about that. And uh, we hope they will continue to get that for the years to come. Uh, very true, sir. I mean, uh, definitely you will be acquiring these four stars from Chat Navigator for the following years. uh so ma'am nirmala ma'am so what were your thoughts when you heard about like uh, that you acquired four stars from charity navigator uh, the organization uh, is very transparent um even before the rating 
there are several uh, fundraising even the united way and all that they they come on the lot of harsh scrutiny for spending money for flights and traveling for the administrators and all that here nothing like that everything goes to india the phone calls the everything internet is whatever we use from each one's homes so basically uh, we stand on the principle that you know uh, whatever you donate uh my sister used to donate to united way and she used to say i'm sending you 50 dollars but when it used to come to us through the process we only got like uh, close to 3 dollars or 4 dollars oh. so i told her please just give it to us in a check we'll get 100% because there is all these different uh middle man who takes money in between so if people pay by check it's 100% if they pay by credit card um some percentage goes but for some people it's convenient because they put it on credit card uh, monthly you know so much to be deducted so i think uh, the the way they run the organization earn the credit of the rating which makes us stand apart from other organization that's so nice ma'am nice to know all these things so ashirya garu you were honored with prestigious shankar ratna award by shankar netralya can you kindly explain what is this uh, shankar ratna award and how this award is given shankar netralya is uh, a non profit organization taking a lot of support from the public financially in non financial to it a lot of support in india and also from us and in 2003 they made a decision to honor those people who supported them in a significant manner okay this is the year of 25th year or the silver jubilee of shankar netralya they formed a committee to select the person who made significant contribution for the organization and every year they have been giving this award to somebody some of the recipients are ratan tata uh, mr yam naik chairman of lawson tobro dr madhavan nair of uh, isro and uh, 2006 the committee chose to give to me and nirmala because of our association with this and uh, for having started this organization in the us and uh, do what we can i'm very happy for them I'm very very thankful to dr badri and shankar netral and the selection committee for giving us an opportunity and the honor and we would like to do whatever we can rest of our life <laughs> thank you so much sir so nirmala ma'am uh, when you were honored with shankar ratna award i mean uh, how it was it 100% goes to him because uh, he in the beginning stages it was a one man show and uh, he did the setting up of the um, 501c and everything you know uh, so basically in the initial stage my children my relatives who were there who were in my house would help out so i think the honor goes to him because he he's the only one was doing most of the work we were just assisting him so it was a good it was a very nice feeling to be uh, recognized because everybody needs motivation and you know a feeling of rec- uh, understanding your, what you're doing here because uh in america raising funds is not easy um everybody thinks before they donate it's not just emotionally anybody gives money you know so uh raising funds and sending uh most of the money to india that itself is a big task here so i think it's a well deserved honor for him and i'm i'm really happy he got that very well said ma'am ma'am acharya sir also mentioned that you were integral part of whatever he does and that one sentence shows the essence of life partnership and it just made me glance shiva and parvati in both of you so what type of uh, role you played in the organization in the beginning uh, there are a lot of doctors coming home uh, they were coming for training so they would stay here uh, So, you know he was working plus doing this so taking them out uh, sightseeing cooking you know and i was working that time so it was a juggle you know and we were doing all that um and in the beginning setting up stage shows for raising funds 
uh, we would go like an hour before and uh, it was two of us trying to set up the stage. Then I would be sitting in the uh, entrance collecting fees, uh, tickets and being run to different Indian stores, putting flyers. So a lot of initially we really had to do a lot. Uh, down the road, a lot of people took notice of the organization and started, a uh, volunteer base started getting very big. And uh, like I said, the trustees who came, the presidents who came, each one took it one step higher, you know. Uh, the programs went very well. Uh, so we are very well recognized in the country. And uh, uh, my contribution, I would say, is to support him every time he's on the phone. Uh, we get very little time of him in the house. So uh, those are the contribution I can really say that we have to share him to the cause, you know. So other than that, uh, they are really managing it very well. Thank you so much, ma'am. There is no doubt that uh, there is a well uh, old saying that behind every successful man, there is a woman. So that's rep that represents you. Thank you so much. So, Ashare Garu, uh, how is the response from the younger generation? How do you attract them to get involved in the trust? Trying to get uh, more of younger people to the organization. I'm uh, one of the oldest person. I'm the one who started in 1988. And I'm still there. Of course, my title is President Emeritus. My heart is in it, but won't be able to do as much as I used to do before. So, currently we have... All the, I'm the only trustee from the original batch of 1988. Uh, we are trying to attract a lot of people. Average age of our trustees is between 40 to 60 now. We want to get more younger people. And uh, what to do is here in the University of Maryland, there's an organization called uh, Mayuri. They organize intercollegiate dance competition. We sponsor that event every year. And uh, we speak there, present our video and all that, attract them to be part of our organization. Also, some of our uh, young people hold the small concerts in their own home. Young people, there's one person called Jay Kannan. He's holding one in his house every year, raises about $5,000. Likewise, people are doing. And uh, uh, recently, we had what I just mentioned about Shatadina Swarachana. 100 days of concerts. So they gave opportunity for a lot of young people to perform. So these young people know about the organization. They become uh, our uh, ambassadors, volunteers, and eventually maybe trustees. Same thing with the Kuchipuri dance. 100 days of Kuchipuri dance happened. Again, we had gave the information to a lot more people now. And this yeah, Jagannath Memorial Concert. That's for one year, one year in a stretch. So together we had about more than 500 artists perform here, young people. So they all know about it. They eventually become part of it. We want to attack them and they kind of, uh, they, they are the future of the organization. We want to attack them and keep them here. That's the whole objective here. Thank you so much, sir. The journey that both of you has taken up is truly inspiring and amazing. You have touched and change the lives of many. So, and now we are coming to the end of our show. So I would like to ask Nirmala ma'am to give a good message to the young people and to all our viewers. I always say, uh, you know, everybody cannot be Mother Teresa's or whatever, uh, you know, Bill Gates or so on to do charity, but to do little things, you know, look around, even in your school, you may find a struggling student, a uh, volunteer to help him, tutor him. Uh, look around, there are a lot of places your expertise is needed. You know, don't think you cannot do anything. Uh, and I think parents uh, do more, action speaks louder, they say. So when parents are volunteering, I see a lot of kids following that, you know, whatever we do, when we go to India, my son volunteers at Netralaya just to gain that experience of being in India and being with the people. So I think children do observe the parents, you know. Uh, so action speaks louder. So if parents are more involved in other than just uh, working and uh, making a life. And if they're involved in charity work, temple or 
any causes, I think the children will follow. And I think that is uh, the younger generation is ready to help. It's just that we have to know how to uh, tap them and get them, you know. So for me, um, kids are running around taking this class and that class. Sometimes I say, I think parents should also encourage them to do some volunteer because that they get hundredfold back because the satisfaction that you get when helping another human being. I think that will be the loud message I would give. Thank you, ma'am. So, Acharya Garu, we came to the end of our show and I would like to request you to give concluding remarks and advice to our young people and to all our viewers. About advice to young people, what I can say is one thing, there are three important assets anybody has. Health, wealth, and time. And also, these keep on depleting pretty quickly. Health deteriorates, wealth one then or lose. Time, of course, one day has to come to an end. And these three assets people use for their three purpose, for one's own welfare, welfare of their own kids and kids and friends and relatives, and third parties, community at large. My advice to young people is use at least part of this the wealth, if not the wealth, at least time for good of the community at large. Somebody, a lot of people, some elderly people needing some help, or a, as my wife said, some young kid may be needing some support. Do something. Somebody may need a ride. Do some service to some people who are badly in need of it. This is all the message I can tell to younger people. Lastly, I'd like to thank Nirmala and my family for letting me use a uh, number of hours I've been using on this organization uh, for the last 33 years. And uh, uh, also I would like to thank uh, Sushanta Ji, Tagini Ji, Mana TV, and also our own president Bala Indurti who introduced me to Mana TV. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Thank you so much, Sri S.E. Acharya Garu and Nirmala Acharya Garu. It was truly inspirational to know both of your life journeys with Shankar Nithalia and the activities you are taking up for the betterment of impoverished people. It's been such an honor talking to both of you. Thanks again for gracing our show with your presence. So yours, I'm sure you got to know a lot of information about Shankar Nithalia, their mission and the various activities they are taking up to do God's own work. With this, Signing off, this is your host, Prashant.